Our next speaker, Dr. Rachel Potter, is a research fellow for Justice and Society at the University of uh, South Australia. She is an experienced researcher, analyst, um, and communicator with a variety of specialist uh, area of inquiry, such as uh, work stress, national policy, digital communication, management, and gender equality. She is an outward facing academic whose work uh, cuts across the discipline of psychology, work uh, health and safety, um, and public health. Sorry, and, and law. Rachel's methodological uh, stance is that uh, research should give a voice to members in society and enact tangible and beneficial change. Rachel's work has been cited in national and international documents uh, that put uh, forward policy changes to improve workers' health and safety. Rachel is currently leading the 2023 National Review into Workplace Discrimination for uh, Pregnant persons, those uh, on parental leave and parents, uh, parents returning to work. The topic of her presentation for today is uh, the national study on work conditions for pregnant workers, those on parental leave and returning to work. I would like to invite Rachel to have her So I think this next, uh, yeah, my presentation hopefully follows on quite nicely from the one before. So I'm gonna be speaking about um, more pregnancy, um, related issues and um, people on leave, parental leave and returning to work. So just a bit of context first is that um, I'm more of an org psych researcher. So my background is um, policy evaluation in terms of work health safety and org psych and um, those kinds of things. Um, and then I had a baby in the COVID times about three years ago. And since then, I had made friends and mums who came up to me and told me about their stories, you know, oh, I've gone back to work, but they've changed my job. That's okay. I'm just going part-time. That's fine. Or, you know, oh, I've missed out a few trainings since I've been, since been back. That's okay. And it just really pissed me off. Like, to be honest, it really got under my skin. I thought, this is not okay. And I'm quite a righteous person anyway. And, you know, I've got work health safety laws to, to help us with this. And so um, I looked into what has been done before on this topic and in terms of like a national study. And I found the um, wonderful report from the Australian Human Rights Commission um, done in 2014, I believe. Um, and then I couldn't find anything else at all. And I was kind of like, am I not doing my job well? Am I not researching this right? Um, what's out there? And in terms of a national kind of overview, there wasn't anything. So I pretty much did this project on the side of my other job because I think it's really important to understand what's going on in this space. Um, and I really wanted to get this in the media, which it has done. It was on the drum two nights ago and in other kind of forms to get um, agitation, to get people talking about it. So I'm just going to go over kind of what we did um, and what we found. And I'm hoping that you can take that away and use that knowledge to then make change. Um, and there'll be a report release, which I'll talk about in a sec. So I just quickly wanted to kind of acknowledge my team, um, you know, who, who kind of helped provide guidance for this piece as well. In terms of collecting data, this has been um, quite a long process. Uh, we didn't have a recruitment kind of agency as such to do this. We relied on people like, um, you know, the Australian Council of Trade Unions passed it on to their women's committees to disseminate. The Parenthood promoted it, um, education unions and middle ground motherhood, um, which is here in Adelaide, promoted it too, and various other people. It just kind of pinged around the country for the past year with people um, filling, out, filling out the survey as such. So it wasn't seeking to just capture negative experiences. It was to give an overall kind of broad understanding of what's going on in this space. So uh, I'm just going to be talking about the current context, I guess, um, and then, like I said, our study design, our findings, and for the purpose of this presentation, I've really focused in on leave-related um, findings, but I've got so much <laughs> more if you had any questions. And just on the point about pregnancy and feeling they have to hide it, I can say that about a quarter of the sample felt they needed to hide their pregnant belly. There's a huge amount of women, you know, and we have a pretty big sample, so... Uh, and then I'll look at um, some insights and some resources and next steps. 
So I think, um, so from the past study that was done by the Australian Human Rights Commission, which I do really acknowledge, um, and they gave me the blessing to continue on their research and adapt their, their report or their, their questions slightly, um, they found that almost half of mothers reported experiencing discrimination and 27% of fathers and partners experienced discrimination. And I just thought this is absolutely crazy because if we look at Australian data now, we know that there's such a huge proportion of the workforce and our population are parents. So why aren't we talking about this more? If you've had a child, been pregnant, it's really, really hard. And to go back to work and to juggle these things is, is incredibly hard. And of course, um, the nature of being pregnant is places a lot of um, say burden, but um, issues on females, people identify as females. So it's, I guess, quite pertinent to our talk today. And we know that people, um, you know, parent couples, with young children, they're steadily increasing. So it's gonna be a very kind of um, much needed kind of uh, thing to look at if we continue to have a population where both parents work, which is a good thing, but we need to make sure we support them properly. So I'll just talk through these briefly. I think we're all kind of across the challenges, but there is a structural inequality in our leave access in this country. And I think there are steps taken, there's positive changes happening or have happened with increasing that. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, leave does f um, tend to go towards the person ident identifying as the mother and not the father, so it places that inequality there. As well as mothers, as a saying, guilt for mothers is like grapes to wine. So we're dealing with a lot of kind of emotional um, burden. We go back to work, we feel guilty. We stay at home, we feel guilty. It's a real kind of difficult position. Um, a lack of sleep, especially for mothers, the research shows it really impacts mothers um, the most. Um, changing of perceptions, I think previous um, presenters have mentioned uh, employers seeing you differently because you're a mother. Seeing There's one study that reports seeing mothers um, as like, you know, um, more warm but less competent. I think that was mirrored in the other talk as well. But also how you see yourself is different, so identity shift. It's difficult to say no. Um, there's a lack of knowledge or awareness of your rights um, as a parent or a pregnant woman. Um, there's a lot of performance pressure in our society to grow, to do more and more and more, which is on all of us, but it's extremely difficult if you're um, you know, a, a new parent. I think um, something here that's a massive challenge is that precarious work element. And so having short-term employment contracts, especially if you wanted to have a baby, is extremely stressful and people are now having to um, really think about when they tell their employer when they're pregnant and they're refraining from doing that because they're scared their contract will be um, expiring and they won't get a new one so we did find that in our data people were in their you know in the qualitative section reporting they were very scared to tell their manager um, for that reason um, and of course we have like with all things um, you know, gender norm, national culture um, influences in Australia that could be improved, I think. Um, this is my son on the screen. Um, so I just wanted to mention that a lot of the times we talk about these issues, particularly with um, pregnancy and parental leave, as, you know, a very kind of male-female issue. But um, I have a non-binary um, same-sex partner and we still experience a lot of the same challenges in terms of accessing leave, actually even kind of more complex challenges sometimes with terminology. So just when I'm talking about this, it's, it's quite good, I think, to refresh and to think it's not just about men, women, it's the primary caregiver and the other partner and just to be mindful of diversity, which is something I've tried to do in my study. So the research we've done extends and transforms the um, survey by the Australian Human Rights Commission. We have um, added some information in. We've changed um, the structure slightly because they had yes or no. We've made it a bit more of like a scale response so we can quantify it um, a bit differently and, and um, correlate it with certain outcomes. We've included some additional um, measures in there which are um, outcome measures like burnout or work engagement. Um, we've made sure we capture qualitative and quantitative information and we opened it up to all genders. So it doesn't matter what gender you are, um, very inclusive of that. That said, I think 
I've got to check on the next slide, but it was um, primarily women who responded. And there's a lot of um, contextual questions like when leave was taken, why is why did you go back to work then? Um, so it had a lot of detail around um, the context of the person on leave. So essentially there was three phases. There was the pregnant phase, the um, parental leave phase and return to work. So people obviously who had, um, had a baby already could complete each stage. Um, if you're just pregnant recently, you'd just fill at that stage. So we kind of had... Um, responses over a different series of um, phases there. This is a bit too much, but essentially <laughs> you can see that um, it's academics. I don't know why we did. Uh, almost 92, well, 91% are female. Um, we did try and really get the male participation up, but it was a bit tricky. Um, and they just didn't kind of clock. Sometimes it was for them too. You know, had people like, oh, you know, you can share or do that. And it was a bit of a surprise. Um, mostly women around 30 to 39 completed it and we have a bit of a representative um, sample of the country which is really good to have um, you know obviously Tasmania could do a bit more but we have <laughs> we did get try really hard to get a representative sample so the findings this is the interesting bit so we can see so we had all together Currently, it's standing at 715. This was this analysis was done around 710 people. So 56% had their opinions ignored when they became pregnant. So all these questions that we asked them were specifically in relation to the pregnancy phase, not just generally. 30% received no information about their leave entitlements. And this figure has remained stable throughout the whole um, survey. I've tracked it from when we had 200 people right up until now, and it's always been 30%. So it's a huge amount that aren't actually getting that information conveyed to them and discussed. 35.5 pressured not to claim something they're entitled to. So that could be sick leave. It could be, uh, you know, for having morning sickness, for example, which is, again, really high. 13% were not granted leave for medical appointments for pregnancy or pregnancy-related illness. So, again, a huge amount, really, in the context of the population. 36% um, had key areas of responsibility removed and replaced with trivial or unpleasant tasks. So when they became pregnant, their employers are often like, let's, you know, bring this down, let's like give you a bit more kind of easier work, but you still need to have meaningful work to be happy at work. 20% uh, received did not receive training they would have received otherwise. And when people went on leave, 21.3% um, received negative marks from their managers. And it's similar for peers too, that they also received um, negative marks. 71% would have liked to have taken more time to care for their child. And we found that people had a lot of access to flexible work arrangements, but like 37.4% of their partners did not or were denied access to flexible work arrangements. So it's a bit of an issue here. It's not equal. It's not, it's, that's a too high proportion um, of people not receiving. We don't really know as well the type of flexible work, but um, in that broad sense, they're not receiving it. Uh, 9.3% did not, oh, Sorry, that's, I missed a word there. Did not receive, I think that's training or bonuses they were entitled to. I've got to check that. Uh, almost 20% were pressured to change their parental leave dates by their managers. 19.2% had their role completely permanently replaced when they're on leave. And we had a lot of people as well that, um, you know, didn't receive any communication from their workplace, even about things that would affect them or communications. And that's that can be their choice, but... There needs to be those clear expectations made as to whether um, that is what they prefer. Uh, the return to work findings were the probably the worst ones out of the three. So 42% received negative or offensive remarks regarding working part-time or requiring flexible working hours. Over half, or it's well over half, 57% were still expected to meet deadlines even if they or their children were sick. And we're talking about this before in the break, how, you know, if, if a, a partner, you know, takes time off to look after a child, they're often up late that night finishing work off. 38% uh, were pressured to not claim something 
I think I've mentioned that in the previous slide it's for pregnancy, but yeah, sick pay, holiday pay, so they're receiving that pressure to not access those rights. Um, the positive is that 60% had access to flexible work arrangements, yet 43% received no information about their return to work entitlements. 8.3% request for leave was due to illness or issues with their baby was unsuccessful. And 20.7% said their request for flexible working hours or work from home was unsuccessful. We had a lot of really like impactful qualitative results too that um, we're going to analyse. Um, but you can see here, this one's been in the media a bit, that um, I was bullied upon my return and made to lift heavy kegs and alcohol cases. The stress affected my breast milk and I was made to express in the toilet. And I read this quite a lot in the findings, this whole thing about expressing in the toilet. It's because maybe they've given a small case, you know, small spot, the door doesn't lock, they're not comfortable, better go to the toilet. It's just appalling. Um, in fact, my friend went back to work recently and she's a dentist. She was made to stand in the corner of a room, not even a seat. And there were, you know, the oxygen cylinders around her and that's where she, she sent me a photo. That's where she was kind of expected to express. Um, I was told I wouldn't want to return to work as I'd be clucky. My career was severely impacted by my pregnancy and I was forced to give up my team leader role. Um, I feel like I miss opportunities because I'm just a mum. I only work four days a week. I might get pregnant again. So it's quite a lot of these um, really shocking um, results. There were some positive ones too. It's not all negative. Um, but I guess in a sense, when I do presentations on this topic, I often say, you know, it's, it's quite a prevalent issue still. Obviously, not much has really changed based on this data. Uh, and making comparisons with previous data, but um, there's a lot of legal protection out there in terms of, you know, we know about the Sex Discrimination Act, and that's been recently amended, and we've got um, anti-discrimination laws that are very stringent, the Fair Work Act, work health safety laws, but these are not being obviously translated into organisational practice. And so that's something I'd like to pursue is why is that not happening and how can we improve it um, in the future? Uh, so oh, I'll just skip this one. It's a bit, okay. <laughs> it's a bit much, but essentially, um, in what we do in our, in our research center is we like to try and create a really healthy work environment and that's, that's good psychosocial safety climate, like a, a sense that you're being protected. And so what can, um, workplaces do to prevent that discrimination? They, they need to focus on building up a good work environment where they value employers and address that climate. So we have a, like a really good, nice tool to assess that. And we work with a lot of organisations to build up that value and the systems to protect their workers' health. Um, it, it really functions as a safety signal for workers accessing things like leave and um, resources. And rather than focusing on individual resilience of a worker, we like, toughen up, you know, let's get better at coping. It's more of an organisational system approach, which corresponds with um, what's required in our legislation, um, work health and safety laws. So it's kind of what we're doing. We're trying to think about how we can create a culture there uh, for pregnant women and parents. And that's, you know, having clear communication channels, having consultation and creating expectations. So, you, you know, entitlements to keeping in touch days, like does the worker want to access these kinds of things? Um, what do they want? having family-friendly policies, um, having trainings about this, like this kind of thing is wonderful. Um, having flexible work arrangements, having pregnancy-related and return to work needs um, accommodated, like having somewhere to express breast milk and breastfeed, establishing equal opportunities for career advancement and professional development, and helping all workers to capitalise on the great benefits that come with having children. So I don't know about anyone else here, but when you're a child, like time becomes so different and you can really accomplish, you feel like you could accomplish so much more in a, in a short amount of time because you appreciate it more and you may develop new skills. So there's a lot of benefits in employing um, pregnant and parent workers. Um, this is just a few um, wonderful resources I've come across. Um, the Parenthood, Transitioning Well is a great company and of course the Working Women's Centre here in SA. Um, the Australian Human Rights Commission also have um, some resources too. Um, 
I'm going to be producing a national review report. So if you did want to receive a copy, please feel free to get in touch. I'll send it out. I really want to get it out as far as I can. And it's going to be um, hopefully just agitating things and trying to create some good policy change, organisational change. So I'm really excited to share that when it's ready. Um, a little plug. <laughs> this is the survey Q, uh, QR code, or you can just Google it or email me for the link. It's going to be open till the 12th and then I'm closing it. But please, if you know any parents or pregnant women, please feel free to take part. Um, we'd love to hear some more voices and boost the numbers even higher. I think that's it from me. Yep. Um, that, thank you. So thank you so much, thank Rachel. Uh, do we have any question here? Yeah, yeah. Ken? The 710 order has not been responsive yet. Um, primarily, did you, did you capture what um, area of work they worked in? Yes. Yeah, yeah we looked at, um, yeah, we've captured all the different industries. Yeah. Um, I haven't, because we've just redone the analysis this week for this presentation, essentially. So I haven't got those figures. Yeah. Um, from, uh, from I think I haven't looked at this most recent one. I can find out for you. The last one there's a lot of hospitality people, more of the yeah health sector. I have to look. I'm just guessing to be honest. Yeah, but I'm happy to share and um, to find out. Yeah, yeah. I've got so many more findings. If anyone wants any more information, but thank you. Any more questions? Okay. No, no questions from online? Oh, no. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> no worries. Okay, thank you. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you.